The water which flowed through Roman aqueducts had a crucial role in Roman life. Rome, the heart of the empire, was supplied with water from 11 great aqueducts which fed into the city. The constant running water was directed by the city engineers into fast flowing channels. Water which was used to run ancient water wheels. Vitruvius wrote detailed accounts of Roman water wheels which could be put to industrial uses around the city. For many years, archaeologists have been fascinated by the discovery of Roman water wheels across Europe. Intriguing evidence of Roman water wheels has been found in Rome, and more incredibly, the machines which they powered. The Oxford archaeologist, Professor Andrew Wilson, worked on excavations at a remarkable site in Rome in 1998. Professor Wilson excavated a large Roman industrial complex, which had evidence of water wheels being used to drive a huge automated flour mill, powered by water from a city aqueduct. It was known as the Janiculum Mill. It was built in the 3rd century AD astride the Aqua Triana, Trajan's Aqueduct, which we can see in blue here running through the middle of the site. It's part of a huge complex of water-driven mills whose purpose was to provide bread for the city of Rome. A series of water wheels was linked to a geared mechanism which turned a giant, heavy millstone. The mills would ensure there was enough flour to make bread for Rome's civilians, mass-produced by the flour mills and bakeries, on a scale never before seen. Vitruvius left details in his writings of how ancient water-powered mills would have worked. This is a French translation of uh, Vitruvius from 1673. It contains some rather fine illustrations of the machines Vitruvius describes but the artist has reinterpreted some of them in the light of his own experience of contemporary water mills. So this illustration shows a water-powered uh, grain mill, which is driven by means of water flowing underneath a wheel and driving it with the paddles on the outside. On the axle of the wheel is mounted a large cogwheel, which meshes with a much smaller one mounted on a vertical spindle, which drives the upper millstone of a pair of millstones mounted on a floor higher up. During excavations in Rome, archaeologists were able to find clues which showed that the Janiculum mill was very similar to those described by Vitruvius. Excavations in the early 1990s found bearing blocks, stones supporting the ends of uh, the axles of water wheels. And by using the spacing between them, we can deduce that there could have been four wheels on the north mill race. On the south side, the axle was set rather higher, allowing a larger wheel, and this may suggest that it drove either a heavier set of millstones or perhaps two set of millstones, one off each end of the axle. So important was water as a source of power for the mills that during one attack on Rome, an attempt was made to block the aqueducts and bring bread production to a standstill. It is the equivalent of the electricity supply being cut off to a modern city today. Water was the lifeblood of Rome, and it was essential it was kept flowing. The automated flour mills of Rome would have been impressive, but the most incredible Roman power plant in the world was discovered in Barbagal in southern France. The ruins uncovered at Barbagal in the 1940s proved the existence of a huge Roman water-powered factory, which experts previously believed could never have been possible. Yet, in the second century AD, the massive water-powered flour mill was built and could supply enough flour to feed the 12,500 people living in the nearby Roman city of Arles. The complex was constructed on a hill and comprised 16 water wheels in all, each powering a continuously turning millstone onto which a hopper dropped the grain. This was industrialization on a massive scale. The mill complex was powered by water from the aqueduct built to supply the population of Arles, but when it reached the top of the Barbegal site, a branch of the aqueduct diverted water off towards the mills. A vast quantity of water from the aqueduct must have been required to keep the mills turning. 
Barbegal avait la vocation d'amener l'eau vers une série de moulins qui allait pouvoir moudre les céréales et pour donner du blé donc, à tout l'Empire romain. Parce qu'il ne faut pas oublier que la Légion était présente dans le sud de la France. Arles was an affluent and prosperous city in Roman times, with the Emperor Constantine briefly based here. It had a large population, but there is said to have been a shortage of slave labor in the region. This may be one of the main reasons the vast mill site was located here as a solution to the problems of manually grinding the huge amounts of flour needed in the city. The aqueduct and the mill complex would have been integral to the city during Roman times. The Barbagal mill site was built 300 years after Vitruvius described earlier water mills used by the Romans, and it shows how they had developed their water power machines to an incredibly sophisticated and efficient degree. Here, water power was exploited to a level of industrialization and mechanization which is almost impossible to reconcile with our notions of the ancient world. The site of Barbagal, which predates the Industrial Revolution by some 1600 years, shows a very early instance of large-scale capital investment in complex machinery. It's mankind's first attempt to harness natural forces to do useful mechanical work. And as such, that's the distant ancestor of a whole host of machines that we're familiar with today. Barbagal provides evidence that the Romans were further ahead in their technological development of water power than previous excavations had shown. At places like Barbagal, we have the evidence to show that the Romans could have had an industrial revolution, a pre-industrial revolution, to move away from a purely labor-intensive, slave-driven economy to one where they're using mechanization and the latest developments in engineering to make their slave labor force more effective. Barbagal is unique because it is the only large-scale water power plant to have survived. But perhaps there are many others lying undiscovered under towns and cities across the old empire. And it is tantalizing to think that if the Romans could harness water power to grind flour, did they also use it on a large scale to drive other machines? Some evidence has survived to suggest they may have used similar water wheels to cut stone blocks for buildings. Once they had mastered the technology, the possibilities would have been endless.